Here is a simple demonstration of how to generate RDF link data from relational data sources using Virtuoso's RDF view functionality. Now this is a very powerful feature that doesn't require a single line of code. You simply leave a wizard to take care of the whole process for you. So basically we start by going into the database admin section within this administrator or administrative UI. And what we want to do specifically is produce RDF views. So these are RDF views rather than traditional SQL views. And so the first thing I have to do is pick my database or my qualifier um, to identify which particular um, relational objects, in this particular case tables, I want to use as part of the view. So what I'm going to do is pick a number of tables here. I'm going to pick a customer table, country, categories, employees, order details, orders, products, provinces, uh, maybe shippers, suppliers, wholesalers. So you've got a good number of tables here. And what I want to do is um, publish this to an endpoint called RDVMS to RDF. And so this gives me a base URL that is ultimately going to play the role of a prefix when shortening the URIs that the system is going to produce for my relational um, database objects. So I simply click on the Generate via Wizard option. Now if you notice, there is a button here that allows me to go straight to the publishing phase. But I want to go through the step-by guide so that I can expose some of the functionality behind um, this particular feature. So the first thing we're, we're able to do is begin to go into the, each table and make certain column level or field level modifications because the defaults from the database may not necessarily match the target ontology that we have in mind. Or typically you may end up having a view. And so because a view isn't a real table and would not naturally be endowed with primary keys, there may be a need to identify which collection of columns or specific columns, a uh, column, pardon me, plays the role of the primary key. So in this case, um, not applicable because we actually have tables. But what you typically have to do with a table is remap some of the data in that table. So in this particular case, I know that employees have photographs. And so what I want to do is um, set the type or remap this type to image GIF. So I'm basically taking the MIME or content type um, for my post published view of this particular database and, and indicating that all the data in the photo column should be mapped to content type image GIF. So I save that. Now I also know that Categories has a similar column with photographs and I'm going to repeat um, the same step. Once I've done that, I'm ready to go to the next stage. So the next stage is simply about asking me, you know, which types of mappings do I want to be generated out of this process. Now, since I'm doing this from scratch, I want the system to generate an ontology from the relational schema. And then I also want it to generate mappings for the instance data for the ontology. So when I use the term ontology, I'm really referring to a data dictionary or a schema. I also want to generate statistics that enable me to uh, quantitatively understand the data space that I'm generating from this relational database. And I'm also taking a default right now regarding ontology rules and instance data rules. So what I can do right now is simply go to the prepare and execute stage. 
And what this stage does is it simply allows me to take a final look at what's been generated by the wizard. So here are some mappings for the instance data. And what you're looking at here is a thing we call sparsicle. So the first half of this process is basically the use of SQL to create a cursor, a collection of records that we're going to navigate through. And as we navigate or iterate through each record in the cursor, we're going to apply sparkle patterns because remember, we're mapping from a relational model to an RDF graph model. So hence the language sparsicle. So this isn't a proprietary language in any shape or form. We're simply using the best language for a hybrid task. So part of the task is SQL oriented, so we use SQL. Then the other part of the task is Sparkle related, so we use Sparkle, hence Sparsicle. And the same thing happens on the ontology side when generating the ontology from the relational schema. So typically, you know, you're happy with this and you're ready to go, you simply click on the execute button. And what the execute button does is actually executes these scripts against the virtuals or instance. Once the execution phase uh, completes, the system is going to present you with a sampling of identifiers that is created for the new RDF linked data entities generated from the relational database. 